Hello, welcome to the Freak Show. Bumpy Big Squiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I start up my coverage of Ash of God's Redemption. It's by Arum Dust and Whisper Games, released on March 23rd, 2018. I was doing a first look mini series on this, but I ran into some issues, guys and gals. We're going to talk it off a big bunch, but essentially my headset broke and I'm having sound issues. A new one is on its way, and I'm using a a rigged system right now. It's It'll work. Anyway, that being said, it did kind of hinder my ability to do recordings this week, and for that I apologize. However, the game is released, I have something that works, and we're going to hop in to start over. And the first look mini-series is pretty much dead on arrival, and we're just going to hop in and do the official coverage, because the game's already out! Hopefully that's okay for an intro, so we're just going to, I guess, delete this, start over from the beginning. So hopefully we'll be able to go through it a bit quicker than we did before, and yeah, we're not going with story mode, we're going with classic. It's the way the game's intended to be played without the other stuff. So. Year 300 since Divine Retribution, the Spring Equinox. Okay, so there you go, guys and gals. Unsolved I... mysteries are like an unquenched thirst. Premonitions of trouble to spur you to keep going. I realize this is going to be a lot of rehashing or redoing of the first look video that was already there. If you guys had already seen it, you can probably skip most of this. Or just watch it and just re-familiarize yourself. I'm going to be playing through this. And yeah, let's just have fun with it, guys and gals. And I do apologize for any of the like samey content. It wasn't really intended to be that way. My apologies. Anyhow, moving forward... Well, let's get some of the storyline stuff. I might be able to skip the tutorial. If so, I will. If not, we'll just play through it again. We'll just do it a bit quicker. I'll see if I can't paraphrase any of the combat tutorial tooltips where you guys can just read it. We'll see. Either way, we will see. So some seriously dark Juju Magumbo went down there. 1,002 years since Divine Retribution. Cool, they added voice acting. Winter, the Vale of Mercy. Foothills of the Milky Mountains. Okay, we are here. They are angry. 700 years ago, you and the other Kuros uh, took to the field of the Drowsy Deep to prevent a great calamity, the Reaping. Your self-sacrifice should have destroyed all Reapers once and for all. Nine years ago, you began feeling a growing sense of unease and decided to roam ter Terminum to find the reason. A month ago, you met a temple guard in the town of uh, Gordon. There was something peculiar about him. Feeling long-forgotten sense of dread, you realized it was an Umbra Reaper in disguise. He noticed you too, but chose not to pursue. He merely winked at you, bowing in jest. The return of the Umbra forewarns of the appending reaping. So you head to the Milky Mountains to find the local seer S. You hope to learn the time and place of the coming reaping and prevent it. 
When you stepped onto the narrow path, you'd noticed several sets of footprints. At the time, you thought that other people seeking the seeress's advice must have anticipated you, but no. They're just robbers looking for an easy target. Well, they will not find one. Time to act. Blue tiles indicate where your character can move during the combat. Orange tiles is extra distance where you expend energy. Let's see if I can skip the tutorial. Oh, it's not going to show me what I need to do. That's fine. I'm actually going to do this my own way. So essentially, we're going to use a little bit of our energy extra here. I'm going to move right up in there. And what I'm going to do is the Whirlwind, which should be strong enough to actually defeat both of these guys. And it is. So they're both going down. Sweet, sweet, nice style. This guy's going to be all angry, and he's going to start chucking stuff at me. And I'm going to scoff at his lameness, and I'm just going to pretty much own his face. I'm going to try going around the back side of him. I don't know that there's any kind of flanking. I imagine there probably is. I don't recall if there was or wasn't. So we're going to burn through a lot of our own energy. Now, notice he has got 53 HP. That's scary times. But the good news is we can attack him and then burn through his extra stuff here, his energy, and he'll take double or triple the damage? I, I don't remember exactly. We'll see. Essentially, a lot more damage doing it that way than the other. So he's going to retreat, scurred like he is, and we're just going to go and finish him off right here. So I guess we could figure it out pretty easily. So we're going to go with the quick strike again. And we would do 15... We would do 15 damage, I guess around 16, something along those lines. If we attacked him, or if we attacked his energy, yeah, that's fine. So there we go. It might be double the damage. I apologize, like I said, I probably should have played through again. I'm just kind of wanting to get through the part that we got through before. So you guys aren't just sitting here going, we've seen this before. You were about to knock on the hut's door when it suddenly flung open. A woman appears on the doorstep. Your heart leaps from your chest. She's the one you'd left behind when you went to fight in the battle for Drowsy Deep. She's the one you loved, Ama. Sorry, folks. My wife was heading out the door. Uh, let's see here. In a detached manner, Blance, what took you so long? It's been 702 years. You managed to survive when 12 of our brethren perished. Did you go into hiding? Bitterly, please call me Hopper. I'm already used to my new name. I was called Blance when we were together. I wasn't hiding in that battle, you know. I was wounded, pierced by arrows. That's why I didn't complete my task. Yes, I've heard the legend of the twelve brave ones who cast an enchantment on themselves and turned into stone. They achieved their goal. Now their land is free from the plague and the reaping. The price was too high, though, if you ask me. Why did you come looking for me again? Well, I wasn't searching for you, but the local seeress. There are signs. Bestias are leaving the forest of uh, Datura. The Vandal Witch has been sighted on the woodland trails. I stumbled upon Atrak and Gordeen myself. They have returned. Another reaping is nigh, perhaps. Hmm. Hmm. Smirking, that's a foolish question, Hopper. I do not foretell the obvious. You might as well have asked whether winter will follow autumn. The reaping is coming. You know it. All loose ends shall be tied. Uh, what do you mean by tied? One day the final reaping will come. The question is if there will be anything left in this world afterwards. Why would you care, though? Aren't you immortal? I am the same as you, Ama. Even if we are both Umbra, we have long embraced the human way of life, and I care about Terminum's fate. To the reaping, we are no more than specks of dust. This time, we don't have twelve comrades willing to sacrifice themselves. Among those still alive, some will succumb and become reapers themselves. Do you really want to get involved? I need to stop the reapings. It's my fault they're happening again. Irritated. You need to get off your pedestal. We are maggots, the lowliest servants lucky enough to be seated at the dining table. Are you looking for the forsaken gods of this land? I have a book that describes the life of one. Here, take a look. I had a good laugh reading this nonsense. Receiving the gift. Thank you for the book. I've been searching high and low for similar records. But still, when and where will the reaping begin? I need to be there. That's where I'm needed. I know it. The souls of the dead have tortured me with the guilt for 700 years. Please, help me. Looking you in the eye. Give me the knife you keep in your bag, the kind our brethren sacrifice themselves with. Give it to me, and you'll get your answer. Passing the bundle. Pity. I'd really hope to use it. I doubt anything else can kill a reaper. Well, 
Here you go, but why do you want it? Hmm. Taking the knife. The reaping shall occur on the day of the ver vernal equinox, both in the north and the south, in the towns of Woden and Albius. I wouldn't waste my time if I were you. Hmm. Or waste time. Sadly, I don't have time to reach the north. Farewell, I hope our paths cross again, though still you haven't told me why you needed the knife. Hmm. I saw you kill me with this very knife, Hopper. So, I hope our paths never cross again. Farewell. What does one need to meet old age in peace? Only to avoid a major disaster. Well, that's depressing. He was going to kill his, his previous uh, gal. That's not cool. Alright, well, we made it through the prologue. We're now into chapter one, and we'll get to see. Again, drinking the beauty of the game. It is very, very, very lovely. I do like it a lot. Love the art style. Loved Year it. Year 1002 in... since Divine Retribution. Burkana, the kingdom of Odala, city of Albius. The spring equinox. Cool. Eighth year of peace since the last war. Double cool. Peace is good. A retired captain of the guard and his daughter are strolling through the festival market. As I said, I highly enjoyed the art style, the artistic direction that the game that this has been compared to, obviously, but it's also kind of what influenced it and was an inspiration for this game. And that was the Banner Saga. Enjoyed it back then, too. Love it here. It's really cool. I like it. All right, let's continue on. Speaking to herself, this is most bizarre. A woman in strange clothes is walking away from the town hall. Her beauty should be turning heads, but I seem to be the only one noticing her. Gleda, are you daydreaming again? You nudge your daughter as you see Baron Trobel, the burgomaster of the town, approach you. Grinning, good day, Thorn. How are you, Gleda? Gleda? Gleda. I take it there is a reason you have been combing the markets since dawn. Looking for a gift for Leaky. Licky, 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 licky. Uh, yes, how did you know? Patting you on the shoulder, Albius isn't the biggest town around. There aren't too many captains of the Royal Guard here, and even fewer captains with wives. And only one of these wives celebrates her birthday on the day of the spring equinox. Please give her my birthday wishes. With gratitude, I will, Burgomaster, though you are most welcome to stop by and do it in person. The Burgomaster is eager to carry on, but one of the citizens calls his name. Trobel nods to you and tends to his business. Looking at the retreating Burgomaster, a stubborn old man, he seems resilient. Smiling, I've heard he is a distant relative of the king himself. Smirking, the distance of the relation may be the secret to his longevity. Well, we got carried away and are no closer to picking a gift for a Licky. Licky? 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 I don't know. Licky. What are we going to give her? Will you give me a hint? What would your mother like? Well, I'm going to continue to go down the same path I did before, I think. And I'm probably going to go with give her jewelry, because that's what I chose before. But maybe... Now we're going to go with jewelry. Let's go with clothing. Let's just see what happens. Then we should head over to Patagang's stall. He's a cloth merchant. If we decide to buy jewelry, then we'll visit the little shop by the town hall. We'll try something different since in the first look video we tried jewelry. We kind of know how that all went down. So let's see if this changes anything. It did say that the outcome of this is going to be like permanently etched in stone and is going to change the game moving forward. So, eh. Well, let's talk to Gleda. Was there something you wanted to discuss? I know what mommy really needs. Health for her aching heart. With hope. Is there any way to improve her health? Magic? Divine intervention? I do not believe in magic. The gods, it seems, do not even help their own servants. Do you remember what their temple is called? The Temple of Divine Retribution. It would be silly to expect any help from them. I wish we knew why they had to exact this retribution on your mother. With a sigh, well, then we should content ourselves with what the marketplace has to offer. And I shall win tomorrow's fencing tournament in her honor. You really think she will take pleasure in watching her daughter hurl herself at another's blade? Even if it is a practice sword? You know, Mama used to fence when she was younger. In a bitter voice, I could never understand that. Thank all the gods she didn't have to use her skill even once. 
All right, let's let's go and buy something. All right, we're gonna go to the uh, cloth merchant. Let's see how this plays out. You make your way to the cloth merchant and find the stall practically blocked from view by the portly figure of the money changer's wife. She is a quarrelsome woman and obviously unhappy about someone invading her space. Greet the woman po politely, or you can mock her. The woman uh, nods to you curtly, show no longer showing frustration. She strides away toward the town gates and disappears among the merchant's stalls. Okay. That was weird. With irritation. Nice to see you, Captain. What uh, what have you done, my friend? You've just lost me a client. I swear I was this close to taking the fortress. Ah, uh, you were right. Stout as a fortress she is. Not every fortress is worth besieging. This fortress is too strong for you to take. Not every fortress is worth besieging. Hey. Your words ring true, my friend. However, since you've rid me of one client, perhaps you would like to pick something for yourself. Uh, Glada brought me here. Let her pick. Well, we are looking for a shawl or a handkerchief. Uh, the best you have. You would not believe, uh, Patagang, how happy I am to see my daughter looking at shawls and handkerchiefs and not choosing another blade or an ancient parchment. Sometimes I think I've got two sons. Daddy, I can hear you. I also don't think that history and fencing are not meant for girls. Macht has gone to the capital and become a baronet. I also want to become somebody. Your brother has become a baronet, you say. Wonderful news. Please, give my congratulations to your mother. I surely will. Actually, she's feeling better today. Good cheer turned out to be more powerful than the healer's gimmicks. Have you heard of the lady healer from uh, Ursus? Her talent is the talk of uh, Burkana. We have already visited the men here in Ursus. The healer was not home at the time. They say she and her daughter could be wandering elsewhere for years. Couldn't exactly sleep on her doorstep now, could I? Shaking his head. But enough of that. You said something about shawls. Let us choose one. <laughs> well, what kind of fabric are you looking for? Radonin wool? Balk, uh, sorry, Baldarian silk? <sighs> mm. Show us the silk. I have just the thing you're looking for, my friend. This is a handkerchief with a silver strand woven into it, the so-called thread of life. They say it protects the wearer from evil magic, but you don't have to believe magic or in magic to appreciate its beauty. Pada Gang stretches a piece of white felt over the counter, reaches into his basket, and picks up a silk handkerchief shimmering with delicate ornaments. As it unfurls, it looks like a host of butterflies fluttering over a snowy field. Daddy, look, this is gorgeous. Imagine Mom wearing it. True, if magic exists, it's the art that creates such masterpieces. Uh, show us the wool. Let me borrow a ring, my friend. The young, the one young Glado wears on her pinky, and I shall spare you the small talk. But it takes the ring off her pinky and hands it to Patagang, who picks up a fluffy woolen shawl from his counter and pulls it through the tiny ring in the blink of an eye. Impressed. Unbelievable. I didn't think it possible, and yet, would this shawl be warm enough? Hey. Yeah, this is precisely the reason why this fabric is so valuable, young lass. Being light and thin, it keeps you warm, just like heavy wool cloth. Clear cloth. This is precisely the reason why. Blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm gonna go with the handkerchief. You unstring your purse and settle with uh, Patagang. Then you neatly fold the silk handkerchief and pass it to Glada. As you're about to leave, the low sound of a bell fills the marketplace. Startled, settlers and buyers alike stare in the direction of the town hall. I feel like the other option was much better than this one, by the by, guys and gals. Passing you the item, if only you had seen the pretty lady I just or I spotted just earlier. She was almost as beautiful as your daughter. She went straight into the town hall. Could it be that her beauty drove the bell ringer crazy? Or did he drink himself silly again? The bell ringer has outdone himself this time. He is not late. He started early. Doesn't the bell sound strange to you? It's almost like it's screaming. Suddenly, all around you, the citizens start to collapse. You turn around, grab Glada by the hand, and run toward the town hall together. Oh, boy. Let me get the mouse out of the way there. Well, oh, one of those guys. 
Oh, some seriously dark Juju Magumbo is about to go down, it seems. So what I'll more than likely end up doing is I'll finish episode one and I'll do episode two and then I'll post them back to back. That way you guys get something new as opposed to kind of like I said, a rehash of the first look video. You see Baron Trobel lying on the ground, dying, blood gushes from his mouth, nose, ears, and eyes. Yes, it is a lovely, lovely situation. To no one in particular, you are tough. It's Dorp Call the Reaper. You struggle to stay on your feet. Blood is gushing from your nose. Gleda, scared to death, is hiding behind your back. But rather, attack a turn. By the way, I think we can click on these. Yeah, we can click on these guys and get a little bit more information. I'm sorry, guys. I had actually forgotten about that. One of the Reapers, according to the Temple Canon, distinguished by hair braided and greased with oil or bile, by shackles and the pins of steel and bronze holding this flesh together. Armed with a double glaive of gray metal, stands second in the hierarchy of heralds carrying out the divine retribution. Profoundly strong and powerful, but also indifferent. A practitioner of doleful callousness and a collector of the deadly tax. Yeah, he's lovely. He is absolutely lovely. All right. Uh, let's, I guess we can check out Thorn here. The only son of a family of impoverished farmers, he's a retired captain of Odalan Royal Guard whose name graces the Book of Honor's first page. He was a three-time fencing champion of Burkana and was the best swordsman in Odala for a decade. He is a mentor and patron of the Albius Young Warriors Regiment and a role model for both students and subordinates. He climbed every rung on the military ladder, rising from page and shield bearer to Count Victi to his grace's savior during the famous campaign to the Edge of Terminum and the Vale. He's a veteran of the Northern Campaigns, the Gabonan War, and the Battle of the Southern Isles. He's been given the title of Baron, a family coat of arms, several royal awards, and an honorary pension. He has also sired two children with his only wife. Ah, uh, what do you want? Cocking his head, nothing the Burgomaster has made his, this decision on everyone's behalf. Forcing out the words, what kind of decision? The ritual one, a tribute to the memory. You use the last reserves of your energy to stay upright. Your heart is about to leap from your chest. Your throat contracts. Studying your face, dying already. I beg you, please leave my daughter alone. Please don't. No, I'm going to live a bit longer. No, I'm going to live... Eh, please don't. Eh, I'm going to live a bit longer. Defiance. It seems the monster is grinning. It clenches its fist, and your heart clenches in your chest. A moment later, the unbearable pain lifts. Oh, he has a minor injury. Towering over you... The reaping is growing stronger. Towering over you, the monster examines you intently for a few seconds, then extends its arm and points at your pendant. The monster grabs your captain's insignia, clenching it in his fist. With a hissing sound, the strix and the pendant shrinks. Nodding. The reaping will start with your family, Thorn Brennan. The monster vanishes into thin air. You shake your head, trying to clear it. Hmm. Exhaling. Oh, blessed gods. Let's see what Gleda's all about. The daughter of Thorn and Licky Brennan, an, um, an appointed baroness, the ancestral book of Victi cites her as the heir of her mother's father, Count Stakek. Stackett, Victi, I got nothing. Along with her brother, the lass ha was given special permission to join the Albius Regiment of Young Soldiers and trains in the art of war under her father's guidance. She was a maid of honor for the royal house of Odala, but never visited the royal court due to her being underage. The Odalan mentors note her as a young woman inclined toward exact sciences and fine arts, who has high sensitivity and resistance to magic. For the past three years, she's been training with her own mother in Albia City, where her family now lives. Did you hear what it said about our family? Quick, we've got to get home. So like I said, folks, I think we're going to probably keep it to right when we get to the first battle, which is right where we broke off the episode last time with the first look. So you guys can kind of like, if you saw the other one, and then you watch. I, I don't know, guys and gals. You run headlong to your house, taking every possible shortcut. Even a small town like Albius has its dark corners, but you could not care less. Sure. Right now, you need to make sure that everything's all right at home. 
Gleda's outcry makes you stop in your tracks. Your daughter hastily pulls some kind of colored plaques from under her belt. Yeah, that's what that's what's almost burnt my tummy. Ras gave them to me about a week ago. A long time ago, they supposedly were magic magical battle cards. Suddenly they became so hot to the touch. Take a look at the cards. Okay, can I, I oh, apparently I can't actually look at the cards. The magical plaques almost burn your fingers, they, but they also fit perfectly in your palm. You feel almost as if you could wave your hand and channel magic into any enemy. Could they regain their powers because of the reaping? How did Rask come by then? You remember seeing such plaques sold as curiosities and souvenirs. Your footsteps coming from somewhere ahead. Three thugs are barring the way. Their puffy faces are contorted with mindless rage. Did highwaymen get so brazen as to attack townsfolk? Hoping for an easy gain? In a swift move, you draw your sword, but the thugs look unimpressed. You look closer and notice their vacant eyes and foam at their mouths. Your opponents are either very drunk or crazy. You step in front of Gleda. I'll beat some sense into them. You stay back. Hmm. In response, Gleda steps aside and draws her own blade. Did I practice with a sword for all those years to just keeping, just keep hiding behind you? Together, we'll deal with them faster. What your daughter is really asking for is some stern parenting, but the thugs attack you with a feral roar. You can only hope your daughter is taking your lessons to heart. If you have more than one character in your party, you can choose the turn order to select any character standing on a highlighted tile. Choose an action to end their turn and the tile will dim. When all of your characters end their turns, a new round will begin and you'll be able to choose between the available characters again. I like that. Click on the icon at the bottom left to use a card. Each card has a number that shows in which round it'll become available. Okay, round one. Each card can only be used once per battle. After you use a card, it won't be available again, again until the next battle. Red skulls next to a character portrait indicates the number of wounds the character's the character has sustained. The character's stats are lower depending on the number of wounds. If the character sustains four wounds, they die. Well, that's not good. Keep an eye out for this useful button. It can be found throughout the game. Click on it to read descriptions of various game mechanics. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to break off the episode right here. And the next episode, which will follow this one immediately, I'm hoping, uh, we'll hop right in and we'll do battle with these guys and continue the story. I hope you guys don't mind. Again, kind of had to rehash the stuff to get the full Let's Play experience. It's, it's fine. If you guys want more information about the game, where to get the game information on the developer, the publisher, any of the wonderful fun stuff, it'll all be down below in the description of the video and various links as it always is. Until the very next episode, my name's Bumby McSquiggums. Thank you for stopping by the Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>